Welcome back, and this is still Plus Politics. While reacting to the statement made by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Kamalami SAN, saying that the only reasons for the release of Omoyele Shore and Sambu Dasuki, a commitment to the rule of law, obedience to court orders, and compassionate grounds, Femi Falana, lead counsel of Omoyele Shore, has argued that under the Nigerian law, a detaining authority has no justifiable reason to continue to hold on to a suspect who has been granted bail by the court. And joining me still to discuss this is legal practitioners Christian Wogu and Ayo Ademi Louis. Thank you, gentlemen, for it's staying still pleasure. with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, let, let's, let's, let's start off this way. He's demanding for an apology. Is this in any way constitutional, demanding for an apology? Okay. Look, Christian, let's start with you. You see, this is the chief law officer of Nigeria. And he's actually doing things that are unconstitutional. Now referring to the Attorney General of the Federation? Yeah. Yes. So you're asking whether the apology is, uh, is, is it right, yes. is it constitutional, is it lawful? So it just accords with reason, with logic, with courtesy. Look, you, you, he's been in defiance to court orders. And then he's coming to tell us that um, releasing people now will be based on his compassion, on the messes he 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 he, bestow, he could bestow on the people. That's that's playing on the intelligence of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. That's playing on the intelligence of the judiciary. That's playing on the intelligence of everybody. So if if he couldn't obey court order, and he wakes up one day to now obey the court order, and somebody had been incarcerated, somebody's right had been breached. Somebody's constitutional rights have been violated. It's only fair. In fact, the least he can do, short of full compensation, is to render an apology. So I think it's a well called for request by the Leonard Council. Right. Advocate, I, okay. advocate. I, I'm going to ask you this. Um, okay. uh, journalists and, and show where it comes to mind yeah. have been. Um, people who draw attention to the wrongdoings of government have, been, have found themselves in prison, detained, you know, unlawfully. Yeah. Now, what do you think the Nigerian judiciary can do to, to stop such unlawful detention and imprisonment? Well, uh, the Nigerian judiciary constitutionally is bestowed with a lot of powers vis-à-vis uh, -vis the provisions of the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. But we need to have a um, we need to have a, a scientific and balanced picture of exactly the position of the general judiciary uh, as of today. Uh, it will go on record that 2019 is a year of the demystification of the general judiciary. And the pinnacle of that demystification is the unconstitutional removal of a sitting chief Justice of the Federation of, the, of, the, of, of Nigeria by an ex parte order, not by a competent court of, uh, of law, but even by a quasi administrative tribunal, whereby an ex parte order that was not signed. That is the beginning of the end. And we need, if we want to allow the judiciary to play its role in this country, we should say it. If you want the judiciary to be closed down, then we should also say it. The fact that the, our courts are now reduced to mere discussion, uh, to mere coffee rooms, is something that we cannot, we cannot continue to, 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 to allow. But what stretches the, the bench is also is the bar. The Nigerian Bar Association has an historic duty to the Nigerian bench to play the role of being a companion, not only in times of rain, but in times of of dry of 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 of, de of, of dry of dryness, yes. well, in, both in fire and both uh, in sunshine. Let me give you an example. Now, in all the uh, periods of the military rule, in fact, one of in 19, particularly in 1988, that was the pinnacle of the Mangida Junta, and you have you find within the, the ranks of the Nigerian Bar Association a president who is resolved. To, 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 to ensure that the rule of law is, a, is, a, is enforced. And that is the person of Allah uh, Akabashon, uh, as he then was. And now, of course, late. Now, the, the Nigerian Bar Association 
play the role that, under that radical leadership of Allah Akaba to strengthen the Nigerian bar, to strengthen the Nigerian bench. It is, in fact, the judgments our courts are given as regards the June 12, as regards uh, the invalidity of the national account uh, regime, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the interim national government and national government, was because of the uh, the vitality, the vibrancy of the Nigerian bar. Now, where was the Nigerian bar association? As at the time, the the uh, the Nigerian bench was facing severe repression. If you ask me, from the Nigerian executive, severe rascality, executive, executive rascality from the Nigerian executive. Of course, like election by courts were I mean, court by courts were called and all that. But we need to go back to that route. We need to transform the Nigerian bar association into a vanguard that can defend, such that when our, our judges are sitting to deliver judgments that are against the executive recklessness, lawlessness, and rascality, they will know that they have a, 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 a fighting vanguard uh, by their side. Yes, I, but, but, but we don't seem to be achieving that, achieving that right now, where, okay. where they're, they're constant and always defiance of court orders, I mean, characterizing the whole well, system. Mm -hmm. Now, let me actually do some Christian. Now, can the power of prerogative of mercy be invoked to justify the release of a person standing trial and who has been granted bail but detained illegally? Because Malami is coming out to say they were granted bail on compassionate grounds. Now, these are people who have been granted bail by court of competent jurisprudence. Yes. Can, can that also, can you, can you invoke mercy in that regards to people who have been granted bail severally? Okay, I will answer this and then I'll make some comments on uh, what um, uh, you had mentioned. Yeah. Now, um, the prerogative of mercy mm -hmm. is an exclusive privilege of the president and or the state the, government. The governor. Yeah. And it is particularly applicable to a convicted individual, somebody already, con I mean, what do you mean convicted for our viewers? As somebody that had gone through the process of trial and the lawyers had addressed the court and the court has found the person guilty, guilty and then had sentenced the person, then the prerogative of mercy can be applied. Now, in the situation of somebody just charged and given bail. Remember, the Constitution presumes the person innocent. Until proven guilty. Until proven guilty. Yeah. Now, so these persons hadn't even started trial, and the court had granted them bail. Bail simply is a situation where the court says, hold this person and ensure he comes and faces his trial, and it's a right. So the Attorney General cannot come via mercy and compassion. That is ridiculous. It is unconstitutional. Very it is wrong. OK, I, let me ask you this. Okay. Is there any reason, any justifiable reason by law to mm. continue to hold someone under detention beyond the 48 hours stipulated by the Nigerian law, even after the person deserves and has been granted bail? Is there any reason whatsoever? For security reasons, any lawful reason justifiable. There, there, is, there, there is no provision for such in our constitution. If you have, if you, if you have any further charges to press against the person, the appropriate thing is for you to go and file those charges and arrange the person in court. If, you, if there are fresh charges or different charges, as the case may be. What we are seeing in our in our country today must be confronted. It's a, it's a reality that must be confronted with the reality. And that reality is that we have a we have in power today a dictatorial regime. We have a, in our land today lawlessness and rascality, executive rascality, legislative recklessness in, in display. And what that kind of situation demands today is a combativity on the part of the bar. There's no bones about it. The Nigerian Bar Association must rise to the occasion by properly electing leaders that can play that role and putting in place effective leadership to resist that kind of something. It must be done. Without that, in the reality, for instance, in Nigeria of today, if you have the, the powers of the court is as wide as the social capacity of the bar. Let me give you an example. For instance, if you go to court today to obtain injunction against trespassers on the land and you obtain an injunction, that injunction remains a tissue paper. If you don't get appropriate enforcement, uh, what I mean, extra legal, extra judicial enforcement, it shows you that Nigeria 
as a third world developing country, is more or less, we are more or less in a jungle of lawlessness. As uh, different from you know the typical European uh, society, or where even our jurisdiction emanates from, which is England, where once you file a matter, possibly you have a thought of negligence against your neighbor. Once you file that uh, action in court, there is least spendings. But the question is that well, does least spendings operate in a place like Nigeria, where after you have even obtained judgment, you may not be able to even enjoy the fruit of that judgment if you don't take possibly extra legal and extra judicial means. What that means is that we have to confront the dictatorship in our, in our country today, the recklessness in our country today, and lawlessness in our country today, with not only a mass, a, a mass uh, uh, you know, confrontation, but also the combativity of the social variability of yeah. the bar. Mm. Let, let's, let's border on the CGN, um, mm. on Walter Nugget for a moment there. Now, he was accused of false declaration of assets, and we all know how that panned out. Now, there are many people also who were caught in that web, false declaration of assets, and they seem to have gone scot free. Now, what can we do as the Nigerian judiciary to make sure that we have same rules, same measurements, same judgment being passed to people, and not only look at it as favoritism to one segment and the other people get to pay the penalty ultimately? Now, what would you say the, the, the Nigerian judiciary can do to ensure that there's uniform, uniformity in, in, in passing of um, laws and also um, judgment on cases that appear to be the same? Okay. Now, um, initially, I said I needed to react to um, some position being taken by counsel. I see, I understand his passion when he thinks the Nigerian bar should rise up to the challenges of abusing the judiciary. Yeah. Now, but you see, I, I don't think it's, I don't think the bar can do more than um, the opportunities that the system is actually giving to it. As soon as the current um, bar president took over, he was slammed with an EFCC charge and um, he began to stand trial. What does that tell you that, look, there is the bar itself, the amputation started with the bar to begin to desecrate the bar and make it a little bit less effective to be able to stand be before the, uh, behind the bench. Now, you take it this way that I think it's going to be a responsibility of all. It's responsibility of the bar. It's respons responsibility of the, uh, religious organizations. It's responsibility of the entire labor. It's less responsibility of every Nigerian to stand up with one voice and give judiciary the pride of place it deserves. And it is in so doing that we can come to this case where you find that, you know, you've, in, in one, somebody coming from a section of the economy of Nigeria, mm -hmm. as soon as his trial starts, a knowledge prosecute comes. Now, that's really what the attorney general can do. He can enter a knowledge prosecute for a particular case yeah. on. He could have done that for Shawere or and there was calls for that. He didn't do that. Now he's telling us that he wants to uh, release them on bail on compassion. So the, the thing is that is we, we are in a situation where power play is a major part of what's happening in the judiciary and in the entire national um, system. The issue that somebody must emerge as president and whatever things that must be done before the election, during the election, after the election, to ensure that that person emerges either as president or any, in any office has to be done. That's the challenge. You now there is a power, there are powers or power playing in all of this. And if we don't, that, if we don't address it, we'll be just looking at the fruits and the branches and neglecting the roots. So these things must be dealt with from the roots in order for us to get out a, a nation you know, where there could be fair play across. All right, quickly, let's, before we wrap up this segment, I, I quickly want to ask you, um, you guys are legal practitioners. The ongoing case between the federal government, the Kaduna State government, and Elza Zaki. Mm. Now, the federal government has come to say they will not interfere because it is a Kaduna State government case. How possible is that, legally? Mm. Uh, just to answer that, if you look at the charges, uh, Elza Zaki is, yes. uh, that position is wrong in law. And I will, I will make do those offenses uh, border on the question of uh, you know uh, I think he was even charged with felony yes felony felonious cases and some of those provisions are obtainable under federal criminal status now that the same thing is also applying in the case of Agbajalingo in Cross River State now this is somebody that is charged with treason 
and the conviction for treason is death. This death sentence. Now, the same thing obtains for Joseph Odok, who is also in the custody of Karaba Correctional Center, too, with Agbajalingo. Now, they are in Agbajalingo's case, the Attorney General of Cross River State is now applying for a fiat from the Attorney General of the Federation upon what basis? The same thing is also happening in uh, Kaduna, Kaduna State. So, we are seeing more or less a vandalization of our status, as I've said. This is a regime that is vandalizing even the jurisprudence, available jurisprudence, and now that it has not been caught uh, uh, in you know, naked in the market square, it is now running Heta's Keta to regard his boast. But we have to place it where it belongs, that this lawlessness will, cannot continue. Thank you, Ayo Ademilu, mm. and also Christian Wogo. Thanks for staying with us. The approval of a sum of 37 billion naira for the renovation of the National Assembly complex has caused an uproar from normal Nigerians and lawmakers such as Bamedeli Salam. For our plus report today, we will be showing some of these calls and comments. Please take a look. Here is my take. The Nigerian judiciary needs to work hard towards the speedy administration and dispensation of justice in the country. It has to create an efficient structure for special crime courts and designating existing courts as special courts with competent and credible judicial officers who will help remove administrative bottlenecks in the judicial process. The separation of powers within the three arms of government is a must and absolute regard for their constitutional duties should be sacrosanct. The rule of law must be upheld regardless of whose ox is God in the process. 
The government, on the other hand, has got to commit to a number of justice sector reforms, such as a review of extant laws and enactment of new laws that will improve the lives of Nigerians. And this has been Plus Politics. Join us again for another interesting episode tomorrow on Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark.